A state spending plan moves forward in Frankfurt. Why some say it will not fix what they call an education crisis. Plus, it was a morning full of donuts, drinks, and discussions. How a local police department got community insight with a side of coffee. Plus, we could see some 80s by this time tomorrow. Those details on the way as Mountain News First at Four continues. Mountain News First at Four continues. A new state spending plan is moving through the General Assembly again. Lawmakers in the Senate approved three budget bills today. There are increases in education, but some say it's still not enough. WIMT's Phil Pendleton has the latest. The three bills approved today would do everything from fund some nuclear research to daily juror pay, increases in classroom spending, but not quite as much of an increase in school transportation funding. The budget spends more than $30 billion and increases classroom spending in the SEEK formula by 4% the first year, then 2% the second. Like the House plan, there are no mandated teacher raises. You know, we think that the House had a, a good approach to it. It largely uh, accommodates uh, for the inflationary effects that a lot of folks have felt. Uh, and we think it's important that the funding flow through this. Our first impression is that there wasn't a mandated raise. We know that we're in an uh, educator crisis right now, and we need to recruit and retain and pull people into the education profession. The bill adds 75 more state troopers each of the next two years, hikes state worker pay by 2.6% each year, and increases juror pay from $5 to $25 a day. Well, juror pay has been a long conversation for decades, really. Um, you know, I believe. Uh, it hadn't been raised since the 80s, maybe even the 70s. It's the Senate plan would also put about $160 million more into the teacher retirement plan. That would be the first year, $300 million the second year. It includes more eligibility for Michelle P. waiver slots. Those are for people with certain disabilities. It would also include mental illness and substance abuse disorder. In Frankfurt, Phil Pendleton, now back to you. Bill, thank you. The full Kentucky Senate could take up the bill shortly, but even if they approve it, since it's different from the House version, it's likely a conference committee will be formed to iron out the differences. Four years after the death of Breonna Taylor, her family is teaming up with lawmakers in Kentucky to ensure justice is served. In 2020, on this day, the 26-year-old was fatally shot in her Louisville apartment during a botched raid by plainclothes narcotics detectives who used a no-knock warrant and battering ram to enter the home. This week, Republican Senator Rand Paul and Democratic Representative Morgan McGarvey reintroduced the Justice for Breonna Taylor Act, a plan to ban no-knock war search warrants nationwide. The effort is supported by Breonna Taylor's mother, Tamika Palmer. That in so many of these cases, officers, I'm not saying that they don't have a right to be in some of these places, but they can do it in a, a safer manner, just to be safe themselves. Like, I don't think that this is a one-sided tool. I think it helps everybody all across the board. None of the three former officers who fired their weapons during the raid were charged with killing Taylor. One of them, Brett Hankison, was charged with wanton endangerment, but a jury found him not guilty last year. Well, the weather is a 10 out of 10 on this Wednesday. We are dry under a sunny sky, also well above average. Let's take a live look across the mountains. And as you can see, not a cloud in the sky from Perry County to Laurel County, also to Pike County at this hour. We are tracking some really nice weather and that will continue as we go into this evening. All thanks to high pressure. We should be in the upper 50s. Most of us right now in the middle to lower 70s up to 73 for Harlan, Manchester, also in Williamsburg and in Prestonsburg up to 71 for Pikeville, 72 for London, also in Irvine at this hour. Up on the radar, a clean sweep, all thanks to high pressure sitting over Virginia, also West Virginia. But notice back to the west over Kansas, also Nebraska, we are tracking an area of low pressure, also a front, and that will turn into a cold front and push into our region as we go into your Friday. Some more showers are set to return as we close out the work week. But until then, some more really warm weather is on the way tomorrow. We could see highs back close to 80 in some locations by this time tomorrow. 
And again, moisture is set to increase by Thursday, also on Friday. And once that system passes, we are much cooler to kick off next week. Highs on Monday and Tuesday back in the 40s, lows in the 20s. More details on that cold snap coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. Cameron, thank you. The Pikeville Police Department hosted a new community outreach today, falling back on a popular cliche. WYMT's Buddy Forbes has more from Pikeville's Heavenly Donuts. Officers with the Pikeville Police Department dropped the cuffs and picked up the cups today for the department's first Coffee with a Cop. Coffee with a Cop brought donuts, drinks, and discussions to Pikeville's Heavenly Donuts, inviting community members to start the morning by grabbing coffee with some of the department's officers. Pikeville Police Chief Michael Riddle says it is all about reminding the community why they are here and hearing the concerns and conversations by meeting them on neutral ground. Yeah, we've seen, uh, you know, some familiar faces. Obviously, some of our city officials showed up today to, to give us some support, and then we had members of from UPIC to show up and some other organizations that we work, we all work with on a daily basis. And then just some members of the community came in today. Riddle says the idea for the event has been brewing for a while, but it only made sense to make it happen today on the six year anniversary of Officer Scotty Hamilton's death. In Pikeville, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. And Riddle says having the first event on such an important day was crucial because it's something Scotty Hamilton would have loved. We'll have more from Chief Riddle about getting out into the community and sipping for Scotty coming up at six. The group Feeding Kentucky hosted Hunger Free Kentucky Day at the state capitol today. Advocates want solutions to help the 600,000 people who face food insecurity and hunger in the state. Governor Bashir signed a proclamation declaring today Hunger Free Kentucky Day. Solving hunger is not about red or blue, it's about right versus wrong. Far too often we worry about party or team when we're taught that parable, the Good Samaritan, that says we're on everybody's team. Everyone is our neighbor and we are to treat everyone with compassion. The governor also addressed House Bill 367, saying it would hurt the most vulnerable. It would change the food assistance program, SNAP, and adjust who's eligible. Those against the bill say it could lead to thousands of people losing SNAP benefits. The governor says if the bill makes it to his desk, he will veto it. The stage is set for the 2024 presidential election after President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump won enough delegates last night to become their party's presumptive nominees. Both candidates swept Tuesday's primaries in Washington State, Mississippi, and Georgia. Now, Georgia is a crucial battleground state where Trump holds a slight edge in a new CBS News poll. This is a big state that is considered really important and I just think that it's going to be even more important than it was the last time. Today, President Biden kicks off back-to-back -back multiple back-to-back uh, -back trips to multiple states in the Midwest, first traveling to Wisconsin and then Michigan tomorrow. Trump is expected to rally in Ohio over the weekend. We'll have more from the campaign trail ahead at 530. Closing arguments today in the manslaughter trial of James Crumbly. He's the father of the teenager who shot and killed four students at his Michigan high school in 2021. Ivan Rodriguez breaks down the latest from the courtroom as well as Crumbly's decision to not testify in his own defense. This case is not about what happened inside of Oxford High School. During closing arguments, James Crumbly's attorney pleaded ignorance on her client's behalf, saying he did not know his son had gained access to the gun and didn't believe there was an imminent threat of danger. If the prosecution had evidence that James knew that his son was accessing firearms without his permission, the prosecution would have shown you that, but you didn't see it. The prosecution, arguing Crumbly, was not only irresponsible, but acted with gross negligence, saying it's his fault the weapon wasn't secured properly and that he ignored warning signs regarding his son's mental health. This case is not about holding James Crumbly responsible for what his son did. It's about his legal duty and his failure to perform it or to perform it in a, in a negligent way. With the jury out of the room, James Crumbly, unlike his wife Jennifer in her case, decided not to testify. It is my decision to remain silent. A key difference between both trials is the prosecution's focus on Crumbly's decision to buy the gun for his son 
and how it was stored. You hear him say the gun was hidden. You hear him say that there was some doodling on a paper, that he, it was, he was a perfect kid. But here's what he never says. He never says, I don't know how we got it. Jennifer Crumbly's case was the first time a parent of a school shooter was held directly responsible for the killings. A jury now faces another historic decision. I'm Ivan Rodriguez reporting. Crumbly could face up to 15 years in prison if convicted. His wife, Jennifer Crumbly, was found guilty on the same charges last month. Coming up on First at Four, people are often concerned that robots could take their jobs in the future. But these ocean robots are creating new opportunities. We'll show you how. Plus, high pressure will control the forecast for now. But notice back to the west, moisture is on the way. Those details after this break.